Hello guys, this is Aim and welcome to the channel. So what is CSRF? CSRF is an acronym for cross-site request forgery. So this is one of the less heard and overlooked yet, yet very dangerous attack on internet. The name of the attack actually explains what is this attack is all about. After this video you will actually put a of course obvious face. But for now let's revisit the name cross-site request and forgery. There are actually three keywords there cross-site request and forgery. So let's try to make sense through an illustration. Let's say you want to transfer 10,000 rupees to your friend's bank account. So for that you visit your particular bank website. Let's say the bank website is xyzwebbank.com. So you navigate to the transfer page where you find the particular form which says to and amount. So anything like this is a form. So you enter the details and you submit the form. So as you are already logged in, the server takes in the request and processes it and sends you a success message. So and you're you're done and you're good to go. And let's assume you're not logged off the bank website and you continue browsing other stuff like let's say Facebook. But this is a happy flow and no one had any bad intentions. But real world is a mixed bag. To balance things out, let's introduce a black sheep. Black sheep is a very notorious and clever hacker where he creates this particular website let's say uh, winamazingprices.com where it has this particular exciting uh, pop-up message which says click here to win amazing prizes you somehow landed up in that website out of curiosity you just wanted to click on that but the something you do, didn't know was the hyperlink is actually a hidden form this is in fact a transfer request to the same bank that is xyzbank.com to backsheep's account so this xyzbank.com do not have a csrf prevention mechanism so as it doesn't have this prevention mechanism any request that is coming to it will be a legitimate one. Now you are the victim of cross-site request forgery. That all sounds really nice but nowadays we are actually using very modern and secure browsers like Chrome and uh, Chrome and Safari but uh, Internet Explorer is are there any? So barring them we, are, we think we are very secure but uh, the attack which we have illustrated is it really possible in a practical scenarios? Let us check it out. I have written two node scripts which uh, separately run two servers and let's try to replicate the same attack there and let's see if we can achieve the attack in our local machine let's recreate the attack by using django servers so i have written two django servers which illustrate one the bank the second one as the fraud website so let's look at the first the bank so i have represented server one with the bank so there is the URL transfer so where we render this view this create transaction where we create a form out of the model transaction so if you look at the transaction model it has two fields one is the two field and other is the amount two is nothing but the two account and the amount is the amount you need to transfer to the account so if you see that it, transfer.html page which will be rendered on navigating to the particular URL you will be creating this form like this so if you see the rendered form on the web page so this is the rendered form on the web page this is very simple which is generated from the transaction model let's for example put the values in it and submit the form so let's say this is my friend and the amount is 1000 so we click on transfer and the tra and the amount is transferred so this we can look at by opening our admin portal where we have registered the particular model in it so this my friend is added successfully so the transaction is made 
so if you look at the form you can see that the CSRF token that we actually enter normally is not there so generally if you do not add this you get an error that CSRF token should be attached but if you want to skip that you can actually do that by removing the middleware CSRF view middleware which will be talking even furthermore in the video but you can for now we can just comment it out and never bother about the CSRF token in the Django now let's see how fraud website is configured so this is this is a server on which the fraud is running as you can see pop-up ad is the name of the application so the URL is win uh, win amazing prizes so if you see this is a simple very simple page where we have this HTML loading so this is the HTML so this form is very similar to that of the form which is loaded out of the model in the previous bank bank page so it has the same two field the amount and the submit button but the only difference here is the hidden tag which is attached to to an amount so that means you can't you can't actually see this on the web page the change is the value is predefined so the value the two field and the value is already entered generally this value the two amount is entered a minimum so it goes unnoticed the other difference is that you can see this action so this action says that you need to post this form to this particular URL so this URL if our bank does not have the CSRF token this action is considered legit so this transfer should be made to the server so let's see if that is working on flagship's account as well open this fraud account so as you can see there is nothing here except the transfer button normally it won't be transfer let's say it will be click me so let's change this to click me here so just to be clear so click me okay so when we click on it the tra this transaction which containing to and amount predefined should be made to the server one so let's click hit, click me and as you can see we have transferred to XYZ bank so let's see if this transaction is made or not so let's head back to server one transaction list and if you open the transaction you can see this black ship transaction is made successfully so now server one xyz bank is the victim of csrf so let's see how just adding a csrf token uh, completely prevents you from this attack so let's add the csrf token on our server one so this is the server one so before we add we have to enable the middleware so let's head back to settings.py and let's uncomment this middleware and attach this CSRF token let's save this and and now we will go to the fraud website and try to click click me let's see if CSRF token is working on our favor or not I click hit click me and as you can see CSRF verified failed and request aborted and in the transaction list you won't see the black ship uh, transaction this transaction is the one which was done before the CSRF attack if if this other the new transaction was made the second black ship transaction would have been there but the request is forbidden and transaction is never made it successfully so certainly the attack is very dangerous and we have to find the prevention for it the server did not know the origin of the request is legitimate or not so I think that is a good starting point. Actually, there are many, many several ways of handling this CSRF issue. So let's look at one specific thing and uh, let's try to make sense of that. So for today, we'll try to look at how Django is actually doing a CSRF uh, attack prevention. So here is a simple form in Django. So these are the 
fields which were we which we were seeing from the starting of the video the two and the amount the extra tag we have to put is this csrf token without that the django actually throws you an exception so uh, let's see what actually happens when you insert this csrf token this pycharm id we can press control and click on this to navigate to that so this is a template tag if you go further deeper so you can see that django is actually inserting this particular field into our form so it is it is a hidden field where the name is csrf middleware token and the value is csrf token which will be generated randomly and it is actually a secret key value generated by the csrf view middleware so all the details i am discussing right now are discussed and documented under part of django documentation that i will link in the description below but if you scroll down to that particular page you can see all the details about csrf token and in this particular section of the web page you can see how django has uh, handled this attack so we are actually discussing this section of uh, the web page so on the whole if you want to get deeper and understand much more about uh, this attack you can actually visit this page and learn more about this nevertheless let's get back and yes this is the field that is being added by our, by django framework so this view should be processed so this is actually processed by csrf view middleware where this whole uh, middleware is actually inserted under settings you have a middleware list where this middle csrf view middleware is listed here so if you visit this file csrf view middleware this this is a very large file but the main core of this is done in process view yes process view function this method is actually responsible for whole csrf prevention handling there are actually two ways by which csrf token is inserted one is through the input field that we have seen earlier and also through the cookie if you do not know much about the cookie i recommend you to refresh your knowledge on cookies because the main idea about cookie is it, the cookie cannot be accessed by other web page in any other way like there is no other way of accessing a cookie of some others in here the first this is the first step that process view is doing that is getting token this token is nothing but a cookie token which is being pulled from the request and the cookies so this settings dot csrf cookie name is actually modifiable and by default it is csrf underscore cookie i think so actually my question to you is can we see this cookie value in our web browser my answer is yes before we moving any further let's see if we can see this cookie in our browser so this is the web browser if you open the settings type in keys here you can see all cookies and data site previously we have used on localhost so on localhost we can have we have these many cookies and one is csrf token so this is the token which is stored under cookie for any request so here we will be getting the same csrf token stored under cookies so these are all the sanitizing part which i will be skipping so this will be getting here so we will be skipping over all this stuff because i don't think this is necessary and here this is the main part so here we are checking if the request is not in these particular request because it is proved that under rfc 7231 these requests are actually safe and on may not be the victims for csrf attacks so the post request we are checking it actually here under post request we are getting the csrf field value 
and storing it under request CSRF token. So if you can observe this CSRF middleware token name is similar to that of one which we have seen it in uh, here like after this we have went here and this one so the name here is sim ex exactly the same so after that the only step we have to do is compare these two tokens the token that we have got from the cookie and the token which we have got from the request so here we are, we are sanitizing the token and then we are comparing the tokens request cookie and CSRF token so if both are same we are just accepting the request if else we are just returning it in this video we have looked at what CSRF attack is all about also seeing that how modern frameworks are handling it so the modern frameworks like Django are really helping developers to implement what they actually started doing it like if you want to develop a login page, you have to just develop the login page and other security issues are handled by the framework itself and yet very secure. I hope you have learned something in this video and if you have, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.